How's it going everybody, it's Salty Trico, and I'm a competitive Pokemon player, and today we're going to be bashing on Gamerite again. Uh, I did make a video a while ago bashing on Gamerite once, and they did not reach out to me and offer me a large sum of money to take it down, and they also did not hire me <laughs> to write their competitive uh, analysis articles, so that means I'm going to have to step in again uh, to complain about them even more. So that's what we're doing here again today, we're complaining. So I thought we might as well open it by uh, looking at something nice. Anyway, check out this cool fan art of Grovile. Doesn't he look so sick? Uh, now that that's over, we can go back to complain. <laughs> now that that nice moment is over, it's time to complain. Um, so if you haven't seen the last video, the TLDR is Game Rant. You know they they're they're a pretty scummy corporation. Uh, they tend to like write things that just like don't. It, it's like how like you'll have a conversation with someone and like you'll be talking, you'll be saying words, but you're not like saying anything. And that's what Gamerat articles basically are. It's like, you're reading things and, like, there are words and it's, like, going into your brain. But there's, like, there's nothing there. It's it, it's like eating styrofoam, like, except in a news article. Um, and they normally have their, like, little casual articles, like, trying to, trying to have fun, talk about, like, Gen 1 and things like that. Listen up! This is Pokemon. This is a video game. You think we're supposed to have fun in video games? No, this is supposed to be competitive. We're supposed to be win. This is, this is all about winning. So uh, in that competitive mindset, once again, we're going to be whining today. So this is an article called Eight Pokemon That Are Better Unevolved, and it's really terrible. Um, it's not, I wouldn't call it as bad as the last one that I talked about. This, this one is still bad. So uh, starting off, they're going to be talking about Pikachu. Now, um, if you're like a novice competitive Pokemon player, like it would kind of check out to you because Pikachu does have one thing over Raichu, which is the white ball. So the white ball is an item that essentially doubles um, Pikachu's special attack and physical attack. So what Gamerant is trying to get about, like on about here is that it makes him really, really, really strong and he does big damage. So the problem with this is that there's more to a Pokemon than damage and Pikachu is a prime example of this because he has absolutely jack for stats. If we go and we just uh, go to our wonderful little uh, show down here and we type in Pikachu. The reason why Pikachu is worse is, like, look at these stats. 35 HP, 40 defense, 50 special defense. This is terrible, but the main point, um, aside from that, is speed, and Raichu has 110, 110 speed uh, to Pikachu's 90, 20 speed is a big difference, base 90 speed, listen man, this is generation 9, base 90 speed is not cutting it anymore, and it, it's really never been cutting it. I think the last time Pikachu has been any, like, remote ounce of useful has been, like, in Gen 2, where it was fringe, so yeah, Pikachu has never been good because it's slow and it's so freaking frail. Like, literally, you could sneeze on Pikachu and he'll fucking die. He will die. He will go in the grave. He will dig his own grave and fall in it and die. Um, so even though he does more damage, Pikachu has less options to get it off because base 90 speed, significantly slower than uh, Raichu. Um, significantly more frail, so he's going to be getting outsped and he's going to be getting knocked over at a light breeze. So yeah, I'm sorry, Game Rant. Uh, I, I see where you were going with that, but no, that's not true. Now, next up is Clefairy, and this is a very content- or not a contentious one, but this is another one where I can kind of see what they were doing with, um, because this would most likely be written at the a like the angle of like VGC or doubles. Um, unfortunately for Gamerant, uh, VGC or doubles is not the only way to play Pokemon. Clefable is one of by far the best Pokemon, it, not in terms- not only in terms of just like now, but in terms of competitive history for every single generation it's been in. S well, that's not true, but since Gen 4. So basically since like, since half of you were born probably. <laughs> um, I shouldn't be saying that, I'm only 20. But the thing is with Clefable is that as it says here, uh, Clefable, or Clefairy has Friend Guard, which reduces the damage on allies during double battles. This is actually pretty nice, but the fact is Clefairy, uh, Clefairy even in doubles, is still pretty niche. Um, let's just pop up Clefairy here. Uh, because it has these stats, and these stats are terrible, so while it does have Friend Guard, um, which does reduce the damage that its allies are going to take, the fact of the matter is, to have this ability, you still have to be running a fucking Clefairy. And Clefairy does have some nice things, like it does have Follow Me. Um, and you have seen Clefairy be used in, um, in competitive settings, even in, like, high, like, the highest competitive setting, uh, being VGC Championships. Uh, however, it is not, I would not consider it to be a meta Pokemon. It is still a, 
an off pick, I would say. Even, even with, like, just a little bit of VGC knowledge, I would say that it's definitely not a staple by any means, where on the other hand, Clefairy, or Clefable is a competitive staple that has been around since Generation 4, completely dominating, um, and has only gotten better. I would say that Gen 8, honestly, was the peak of Clefairy, or similar names, too many, uh, the peak of uh, Clefable, uh, almost being banned in early Gen 8. So once again, I could see what they were going for here. Man, that's so sick. I could see what they were going for, but I still wouldn't say in almost any regard that Clefairy is better than Clefable. It is, it is better at doing something, but I'm all, I'm probably better at uh, LeBron James at making YouTube videos. But does that mean I'm a better basketball player than LeBron James? No. Um, that was a terrible analogy, but <laughs> you see what I was going for. Actually, let's talk about these as long as I have them pulled up. So Porygon 2 and Porygon C are probably the one that you could argue the most in terms of one being directly more useful than the other. Um, Porygon Z is definitely one of the more disappointing Pokemon because it seems like it would have a lot of strengths going for it, but then it just kind of falls short. Um, it's Pokemon that never really... Uh, uh, I want to say, like, reached its pinnacle of where the hype was. It kind of fell short. And the reason this is, is because one, it's a normal type, two, it's got base 90 speed, and I've already mentioned before that base 90 speed kind of isn't cutting it, especially for a Pokemon that's frail, which Porygon Z is. Um, and a, it has only normal stab, so while adaptability is cool, you're still firing off normal type attacks, which aren't great. So Porygon Z, not a great Pokemon, and I think it actually fell to like the lowest, like an insane low tier. Yeah, it's an NU now, which is kind of crazy to think, because it's always been like a, a UU or UUBL Pokemon. Um, but Porygon 2 is, once again, I, I still wouldn't say it's better. I would say when it comes to VGC, Porygon 2 is strictly better because it has, or it's a more effective user of Trick Room. But we, we have come to the point where we have Trick Roomers who are significantly better than Porygon 2. Like, there are some formats where it's like super, super restricted in Porygon 2, like, if, if Porygon 2 could be the best Trick Roomer, then yeah, sure, I'm okay with that. Um, but the problem with Porygon 2 is that it's completely, um, and I'm going to carry this fact over to the other Pokemon, um, Rhydon and Chansey, is that they're too dependent on um, Eviolite to actually be consistent. Like, if you get hit with one knockoff, it's Jover. Um, you lose basically all your bulk and you're just a not fully evolved Pokemon with no item. Um, so I, I, I would say that Porygon 2 is probably the one on this list that I would agree the most with, just because like it can function as a Trick Roomer in singles as well. It's still definitely not better than Porygon Z in singles, but it still has a niche in singles and it's definitely better in VGC. So now we're going to talk about the um, one that I said was just complete stupid, just totally wrong, which is Rhydon versus Rhyperior. Um, man, I... My guess is that, like, the person who wrote this was just a Gen 1-er. <laughs> and, and they're like, oh, Rhydon, you could put an Evil Light on it. It's so cool because it's big and strong. Um, the problem is, once again, there's a cool move called Knockoff. Um, and there's another issue with the idea that you can just hold um, Evil Light. Which is, if you have to hold Eviolite, you can't hold a different item. Which is really important for a Pokemon like Rhyperior and also Blissey, because items are like one of the most important things in Pokemon, like in general. <laughs> like, sure, you could you could have a uh, slightly less strong but more bulky uh, guy with the same type, or you could have like a more strong. Uh, more flexible, um, more po more potent Pokemon. Like, you could put, like, Weakness Policy on this, and you could be a strong sweeper. Rhydon couldn't do that. Um, you could put Leftovers, and you can be a good defensive Pokemon. Rhydon can't really do that. It gets worn down really quickly. Um, you could put freaking Pasho Berry if you really fucking hate water types. Rhydon can't do that. The thing is, Eviolite is a really restrictive item, and you never want to have to run it. Um, the reason Chansey got away with it for so long was because um, Megas and Z-moves were really popular, which made Knockoff less popular, but especially now that those are gone, like, a Violet user is just... <whistles> they fell off a cliff, they're gone. Um, so yeah, one, Rhydon, 
Like, you could make, make a case for Chansey where you could say some generations Chansey was better than Blissey. You can't do that for Rhydon. Rhydon was never better than Rhyperior, and you're, you, you, like, there's no way that you can spin it to make it so that Rhydon is superior, uh, no pun intended to Rhyperior. Um, and, yeah, I mean, I already mostly talked about Chansey and Blissey, but I'll talk about them briefly. Um, I'm just going to point out the fact that Chansey is an RU and Blissey is an OU. And I think that's just a testament to what I mentioned earlier about um, a Violet. Because if we look at Chansey versus Blissey, like, if, stats-wise, like, if we think about a Violet, Chansey is... If the item slot isn't that important and you can just slap a Violet on there and be okay with it, Chansey is a strictly superior Pokemon to Blissey. But for some reason, it's two tiers below. Because, like I mentioned, knockoff is really good. You get your item knocked off, you're a lot weaker. Um, two, not being able to have a different item really hinders you. And, to be honest, that's really it. Just items are so powerful. And that's, like, the the power... Look at the power creep between Generation 3 and Generation 1. Where you have Pokemon, like, basically not able to switch into things. Like, except if, like, you're in Gen 1 running Explosion. Like, and then in Gen 2, where, like, the only item is, like, Leftovers, where the battles go for, like, hundreds of turns. That's an exaggeration. Um, and then in Gen 3, when you get Choice Band, and things become really strong. Like, you can see the effect that items have on the competitive metagame. And a Violate is just an item that you really never want to run. So, I'll stop ranting about that, and let's go to a Pokemon that talks about something different. Um, which is Murkrow. This is a similar case to Clefairy, where they're exclusively talking about VGC. Um, and I, I think this is a case where you could definitely argue it, and I won't yell... This will be a short one, because I, I don't have too many gripes about this. Um, because unlike... Um, or unlike Clefairy versus Clefable, where Clefable is a very relevant Pokemon in singles and has been one of the most relevant and powerful and dominant Pokemon since Generation 4, um, Hunchgrove really can't say the th same thing. It's always been a lower tier menace. Um, I think it might be in PU now, actually. Oh, it's in ZU. Yeah, so Hunchgrove definitely fell from grace. So the reason that um, Hunchgrove is so much, in theory, worse than Murkrow is because of Prankster. Now, Prankster did get uh, nerfed in Generation... I don't remember if it was 6 or 7. I think Generation 7 is when it got nerfed um, to not hit Dark Types, but Prankster is still very powerful, and it has always been very powerful, and specifically in VGC. If you're making a singles analysis, there is no reason you would ever want to use Murkrow over Honchkrow. Murkrow is a terrible Pokemon. But if we're talking about VGC, there's really not much reason you would ever want to use Honchkrow, and Murkrow is far superior. However, Murkrow's niche in VGC is definitely, like, more impactful than Honchkrow's niche in singles. So I'll actually give it to them. And the, I'll, I'll briefly talk about it. Uh, the reason Murkrow is so good is because... A couple reasons. Um, one is as Quash, which is a really cool and funny prankster move. If you don't have prankster, this is... And if you're playing singles, this move is completely useless. But it's nice for VGC, because if you're doing it with Prankster, you have priority. So you can force a target to move last. Um, so if you have a Pokemon, you're staring down a Pokemon that's faster than your other Pokemon. You can use Quash on it, and your Pokemon will always move before it. Which is very useful. Um, you also have Prankster Haze. Haze is a nice move to clear uh, stat changes. Uh, let's just look at status. You also have... Da -da -da, you also have Prankster Taunt. You have Prankster Tailwind. Um, these are all... Or Prankster, Prankster Thunder Wave is very important. These are all very nice uses to have. So Hunch, or Murkrow becomes sort of like the ultimate like Swiss Army knife of a Prankster Pokemon. So I will give Gamerant this one. If you want to call Murkrow better than Honchkrow, if you're analyzing both VGC and singles, I won't argue with you too much. I, I wouldn't say I fully agree with it, but I, I, can, I can respect the viewpoint. Um... And now we're going to talk about Vigoroth, which is a little more of a nuanced. The first couple were just like, I would say, just objectively wrong. This is more of an apples to oranges comparison, because what Vigoroth and what Slacking do are both very, uh, very different, and they're both neither very good. Let's talk about Slacking first, and let's talk about why it's terrible. Okay, so Slacking is one of the most infam infamous Pokemon in Pokemon history, because it has one ability, which is Truant, which means every other turn you don't move. Which is terrible. It's one of the worst abilities in the game. It is meant exclusively as a handicap. 
this Pokemon is mostly just meant as a meme. It's meant to be like, haha, look at Slacking, it's so bad. Um, Slacking still can do things, which I want to stress. Slacking is not the worst Pokemon of all time, uh, despite what some people might argue, because what it can do is it can be a very potent offensive threat, because what you can do is you can switch out the next turn, and while let me preface by saying this does not make Slacking good at all, it is still a terrible Pokemon, it is still, it can still do things. You can still use it to, like, moderate success. Like, you would never want to use it if you could use a different Pokemon, but if you're just looking to have fun, or if you're playing a lower tier, it's an option that you can use, and you're not, like, it... Okay, I was gonna say you're not handicapping yourself. You are. Once again, Slacking is still a bad Pokemon. But it has things that it can do. It's not, like, completely worth worthless. I would say that, like, usually you'd see, uh, like a choice spec set, and you would have, or like a choice band set, and then you'd have like double edge, and then you would have like giga impact, and then some coverage moves. So the idea usually with slacking is you bring it in, and you blast something really, really, really fucking hard and pray it dies. So then you could either switch out if you use a move that doesn't have, um, like, okay, let's talk about giga impact first. This and Hyper Beam are commonly used on Slacking because it already can't move the next turn anyway. So you might as well use these moves because they're big and strong and they, the drawback is already there, so might as well. Or you could use Double Edge, you can just come in and you can slam something and then you can switch right out. Um, and then Vigoroth is a definitely very different Pokemon, if I could spell. Wow, I still can't spell. <laughs> but Vigoroth is a Pokemon that once again uses Violet. Um, its main draw is that it doesn't have Truant and it says has an ability that isn't actively uh, hindering it. Still not a great ability, but the idea is you can bring it in, um, and it's like, it's a bulk up cheese Pokemon. You come in, and in theory with um, Eviolite, you have very good bulk. So you come in and you bulk up, and you can like body slam, and you can like, does this get knock off? You can like knock off, and then you can slack off. And in theory, it's like a, a bruiser, like a mid to late game Pokemon. You could use it as a bruiser in the mid game, or if your opponent just completely lacks any special attackers or fighting types. It could be like a late game sweeper. But once again, this is still not good. Like, it's apples to oranges, but if apples tasted like shit and oranges tasted like piss, <laughs> it's like, you really don't have too many good options either way. So it's like, it's like arguing if, it's like arguing if you want me to slap you in the face or punch you in the face it's <laughs> you really don't have good choices and arguing if one is better than the other like it's something that you could do is there much of a point to it not really but if you're making like a list of like eight pokemon that are better unevolved like you have to be you have to be better i would say like you can't just be like eh. i mean i guess you could make an argument where it's better like i wouldn't say that any of these pokemon are better than their evolved forms like, I guess you could, like, you could say that, like, an alternate title that I wouldn't argue with, which, like, granted is less quick pity, is, like, Pokemon that can do things better than their evolved forms. Like, if it was that, I wouldn't complain, because that would be true. However, are these Pokemon better than their evolved forms? Eh, nah, nah, no, not really. So once again, to conclude, I'm going to extend the same offer to Gamerant. Um, you could either pay me a lot of money, take the video down, you could hire me to write your articles, or I'll keep making videos making fun of you. So, once again, my work email, <laughs> my work email is in my about page. <laughs> so if you want to shoot me an email, game rant, feel free. Anyway, that's all I got for today. Make sure to like and subscribe, boom, if you want to see more competitive analysis. You can look here, I guess, card on screen or whatever. Um, bye.